this video, we're going to revise what it means when we talk about the rate of reaction and also we're going to have a look at different ways in the lab that we can actually measure the rate of reaction. So what do we mean when we talk about the rate of reaction? Let's have a look. So here I've got some hydrochloric acid in each flask, 100 cm cubed of each and it's the same concentration. And here I've got two samples of magnesium. One sample is in small pieces, the other sample is much larger pieces of magnesium. So let's have a look what happens when we put them in with the acid. So the small pieces going in first of all. Straight away we're getting quite a vigorous reaction there. And then the larger pieces. So it's quite obvious that the small pieces are reacting much, much quicker. So we would say these have a higher rate of reaction. Whereas the larger pieces are reacting more slowly, we can tell there's less fizzing and less bubbling, so we would say that has a lower rate of reaction. So how do we know what method to choose when measuring the rate of reaction? The way you can measure the rate of reaction depends on what type of product is made. Sometimes a gas is made and sometimes a solid is made. To see what type of product is made, look at the state symbols in an equation. In particular, look at the state symbols on the right hand side of the arrow where the products are found. In the first example, we can see that H2 is a gas as shown by the small g which is the state symbol for a gas. In the second example, we can see that CaCO3 is produced and the small s tells us that CaCO3 is a solid. So just by using the equations, we can tell that in the first example, a gas is made and in the second example, a solid is made. And this is going to help us decide what method to use to measure the rate of reaction. So, once we know that the chemical reaction is going to produce a gas, there are a number of ways we can collect that gas to measure the rate of reaction. The first method is using a gas syringe, which will be used to collect the gas. As the reaction bubbles, the gas will be made, it will pass along this delivery tube, and then we'll see the gas syringe moving out, and we can read off the volume of gas made. So, once again, we're using hydrochloric acid and magnesium. So as soon as the two reactants are together, we put the cork back in and we can see the gas syringe moving out as the gas is being generated. And we will take a reading at regular intervals, maybe every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds or even every minute. And we will do that over five minutes to see how the rate of reaction changes. So here is the second way of measuring the rate of reaction when we know the reaction is going to produce a gas. I've got a conical flask with the first reactant in and it's connected via a delivery tube to an upturned measuring cylinder that's got water in. So let's see what happens when I add the magnesium to the acid and the gas starts to be generated. So I would add the second reactant, put the bung back in, start the stopwatch straight away and as we can see, the gas is being generated, it's passing along the del delivery tube and then bubbles of gas are forcing the water out of the measuring cylinder, it's displacing the water. And then every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds I would be able to read off the volume of gas that's been made by that time. Obviously we need to do it at regular intervals whether that's every 30 seconds or every minute. So if the reaction does produce a gas, there is one other way that you can use to measure the rate of reaction. This time we're not measuring the volume of gas given off, we're measuring the mass of the contents of the flask. So if I write down the mass to start with, it's 296.74 grams. 
and that's all of the equipment and all of the reactants inside. I'm then going to mix the two reactants together. and start the stopwatch and then every 30 seconds I would take the new reading of the mass and it's already dropped from 296.74 to 296.68 and that's because as the gas is being given off gas molecules are escaping to the air and therefore the contents of the flask are getting lighter so it's important that we use cotton wool to plug the neck of the flask to stop any acid from spraying out but at the same time it will let the gas escape and we will see that decrease in mass. I'm using a balance that measures to two decimal places so we say it's got a high resolution because obviously the mass isn't going to change a great amount just with those few molecules of gas being released. So we would track the mass at regular intervals every 10 seconds, every 30 seconds. It's now down to 296.5. And so that gives us an indication of how quick the reaction is proceeding or, in other words, the rate of reaction. We've already mentioned that sometimes a solid is made in a chemical reaction. So in that situation, how can we measure the rate of reaction where there's no gas being produced? Well, I've got here a cross marked on a piece of paper and I'm going to stand the flask on top of it. I'm using sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to pour the first reactants in. And then as I pour the second reactant in, I'm going to start the stopwatch. Now, as the solid is produced, those tiny particles of solid will make the solution go cloudy and so what we're going to do is time it until we can no longer see the cross through the reactants. Now where we've got two liquids like this producing a solid we call that solid a precipitate and the reason we're using a cross on the white paper is so that we're taking out some of the subjectivity and we're timing it to the same point of cloudiness each time until the cross is no longer visible. We'd then stop the clock and that would give us an indication of how fast the reaction is going or in terms of the rate of reaction. If it's a faster reaction, it's going to be a higher rate of reaction. So in the next video, we're going to look at how we can use the results of those experiments to actually calculate the rate of reaction. If you found the video useful, please remember to subscribe and tell your friends about the video. Thank you for watching.